Hey, and welcome to Apple A Day. Today, I wanted to highlight the power of using Apple Motion to create templates for Final Cut Pro in a real world scenario. Recently, I teamed up with a graphic designer and we combined two of our interests, trivia and movies. We created a new YouTube channel called Hot Buttered Trivia. This is what you're watching right now. We just released our first full length video, which has a Christmas movie theme. Please do me a favor and check out the link in the description below. It's a lot of fun. You won't be disappointed. So I'm telling you about Hot Buttered Trivia for a few reasons, one being just shameless promotion, and the other is to show you how this was created using Apple Motion and Final Cut Pro. The two most important Apple Motion features we relied on were drop zones and rigs. The drop zones let us place images and video onto the templates while in Final Cut Pro, and the rigs let us add checkboxes and drop down menus to control display options for the templates. So I'm gonna show you briefly how these templates work in Final Cut Pro. So as you can see, I've got the project open for our Christmas movie trivia video. I've silenced all of the audio roles because I'm only gonna focus on the video aspect of the templates. So looking at the timeline, you can see I have a background clip. This was made separately and rendered out into its own video file, which saves a lot of processing power as it doesn't have to constantly render it. So turning that off, you can see that all of the templates actually have a transparent background. I'm just gonna turn that background back on. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that these templates overlap. That's because the template contains the transition that we're using between the questions. It's one and a half seconds. I'm gonna select this template here, and if I go over to the top right, we can see the published parameters. And these are parameters that come from Apple Motion. You can see that I have two drop zones, but there's also this option up top, which says transition, and it's a drop down menu, and it says both at end, at beginning, or none. So this is what's controlling the transition that appears on the clip. I'll move the playhead to the beginning of this clip and press play, and you can see the transition. If I turn this to none, and go here and press play again, no transition. So we have total control over where those transitions appear. I also use the rigging for another question type that we have called real or fake. I'm just gonna to go to the end of the timeline and drag down that template. This has a checkbox in it called real, as you can see right here. I'm just gonna position the playhead to where it reveals the answer, right there. And it shows me the word fake in that graphic. If I toggle this real checkbox on or off, you can see the graphic changing. So to show you how the final video was built from the templates, I'm gonna drag a few more onto the timeline. I know I have one and a half seconds needed for the overlap for the transition. So all I have to do is when I drag down a new template, I just have to snap it to the end of the previous template and then move it back by one and one half seconds. So I just type in minus 115 because this is a 30 frame per second timeline. If I play the section where the questions change, notice I have no transition. That's because I forgot to turn it on. So the transition up here is set to none. I'm gonna change that to both because I want the transition to be at the beginning and at the end. So when I drag in another template, I'm just gonna snap that right there. Like minus 115 for one second and 15 frames. You can see the transition works there as well. The only thing left to do is to drag the images or videos onto the drop zones. These templates are reused throughout the video and hopefully we'll be reusing them in future videos as well. We've also started working on a second video which has a time travel movie theme. Rather than creating brand new templates, I added a new rig dropdown menu called theme and this will let us change the look of each template. One element that will change will be the timer. For the Christmas video, we used a snow globe. We did something a little more elaborate for time travel. I only have this in one template right now as it is a work in progress. Let me drag this down onto the timeline and position the playhead to where the timer is. As you can see, it's a snow globe. Now on the top, I've got this theme option and it's set to winter. If I select that and change it to time travel, we have a completely different graphic. 
I'm going to play that. And not only is the graphic different, but the actual animation is different as well. So how do you go about making a rig that changes what appears in the template? Well, let's jump over to Motion, and I'll show you briefly how that's done. So here I am in the same template, this last word template. So if I go over to the Layers tab and click on Rig, you'll see that I've got two controls in here. I've got this one called Theme, which is a drop-down menu, and I've got the Transition, which also is a drop-down menu. So if I change the Winter theme to Time Travel, watch what happens to these two sliders. These sliders are associated to the Time Travel group, and the snow globe group. Now watch what happens when I change the theme. They switch. The time travel suddenly became 100% opacity and the snow globe went down to zero. That's basically all you need to do to turn elements on and off in motion. You have to use the opacity. Unfortunately, there's no way to associate these checkboxes here to a rig. That would be a little bit easier if motion would allow that, because then you could just say, hey, this checkbox should turn this layer on or off. But it doesn't work that way. Instead, you just use the opacity property to achieve the same effect. And it's really easy to add these items to a rig. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to turn watermark on or off, depending on whether or not I was in time travel or winter. So in order to do that, you first have to select the layer or the group that you want to turn on or off, and go over to the inspector and properties, and down to opacity. And on the far right of the Opacity property, click on the drop-down arrow, go down to Add to Rig, and we're not going to create a new rig, we're going to add this to an existing rig. So go down to Rig, and Add to Theme, which is the name of the property that we're adding this to. That's the name of the drop-down menu. So I'm going to select that. If I go back to Theme, you'll see that it's got a third item in here, and that is the Watermark Opacity. It defaults to being on at 100%, but let's say if I go to winter, maybe for some reason I don't want that on for the winter theme, so I'm just going to turn that down. And that's all there is to it. If I go back to time travel, it's on. Winter, it's off. Really simple. Okay, well, that's a really brief intro to using templates and rigs created in Apple Motion for use in Final Cut Pro. Now, I realize I didn't go into great detail like I usually do in my tutorials, this was just showing off how you can use templates from Motion in Final Cut Pro to achieve some great results. If you do want to know more about setting up rigs in Motion, please let me know in the comments below and I'll put together an in-depth tutorial. And if you don't mind, please help out our new trivia channel and go check out Hot Butter Trivia, the Christmas edition video, and give us a like and please subscribe. That's it for today. I'm John Martins. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Apple A Day.